Hi, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and today I'm gonna talk about keeping a garden journal. I'm gonna give you an idea of what, as my first year, I kept in my, what I logged in my garden journal. Um, some of the mini cheat sheet spreadsheets I kept on my computer um, for, for reference as well as kind of some of the things I'm going to add this year and why. Um, and let me, before I go further into this, let me talk about, I'm going to talk a little bit about the winter sowing process. You'll hear that mentioned um, as one of the things I logged um, in terms of planting. And if you want to know more about winter sowing, please check out my winter sowing one-on-one series in a, and, and how to do it. But in a nutshell, um, it's basically a way of growing seedlings outdoors using things like milk jugs, um, instead of using, um, growing them indoors under grow lights over the winter. So that gives you an idea of what it's about for context. The other thing I want to say is I think keeping a journal, well, obviously you don't have to, I think is super useful because it, it's useful to your future self. In 2021, I'm looking through this journal and I'm seeing the things I logged in 2020 and both it's fun because it's kind of nostalgic, but also it's reminding me of the things I want to do differently this year. And I think it's actually, <laughs> as a side benefit to you, it's actually some of the things I'm talking about in videos lately have to do with kind of what I've marked in the journal from last year. So I think it's useful in that way, but also it's useful during the year because for example, when I log what I've winter sowed when, because I space out filling up those jugs over a certain amount of time, when I, when I log that, then later on when I'm like, oh crap, did I already plant um, seedlings for marigolds? And I don't want to traipse outside in the snow or in the cold or whatever to look at the jugs to know. I just check my journal and I see, oh, I sowed that on February 1 okay, I'm good. I don't need to plant any more of those unless I decide I want more. So that gives you an idea of why it's useful to keep one. Now you can keep it in any format. You can, ha you can use a notebook like I did. This little um, uh, Centauro notebook that I got in London in 2019 when my husband and I went on our belated honeymoon. Um, or you can also, um, you know, keep it on, on a on a computer, on a spreadsheet, or on a online form like I have Evernote. You could keep it, you know, log on there. There's all kinds of ways you can do it. Um, some people keep three ring binders. Um, so, you know, there's all kinds of ways. Now, let me go through what I logged last year. And <laughs> my handwriting isn't great. And uh, I'm not going to apologize for it, but I have to say, when I was keeping this log, I never expected to be showing it to anybody. <laughs> but uh, it's pretty tame anyway, so it's not a problem. Okay, so for example, on February 1, which was the first day I winter sowed anything, what's the first day I started my seedlings in winter sowing jugs, was on February 1. And you can see here that I did swamp and milkweed, I did one jug. And I did five holes, and that means um, that means I poked five holes and put seeds in five holes in the soil. I wish this is one of the things I will do differently next year, which is I wish I had actually written down how many seeds I had planted instead of how many holes I poked. I don't know why I thought that was logical, because then I would have a better idea of propagation rates afterwards. All right, I'll get to other things I would I want to do differently this year later on. So then if you'll notice, I also went back with a different colored pen later on and I marked down that the jugs failed. Um, and that was because they didn't grow. Um, so I did go back and mark when they failed. I don't think I did it for everything, but I know I did it a few times and that's a few examples. All right, other things I included in my journal include, I made a list because why not, um, include when I direct sowed, meaning when I planted seeds directly in the soil outside instead of starting seedlings indoors. And one of the things I included when I direct sowed was when I should expect to see the plants at full maturity. So for example, if a plant has 60 days to maturity, I, I counted out and literally you can say, hey Google, how many days, how many is 30 days after July 1 or whatever? And it'll tell you. And so I would, I would mark down in my journal about the week or the time when I should expect those plants to be mature. And that was helpful to me because as a new gardener, I'm, I want to harvest those plants now. I want them now, right? But I don't have a sense for when I should expect them to be ready. And so by keeping a, in the journal a log of the expected maturity date or week, that helped me know when I should start harvesting them. 
It also meant that I was aware when certain plants were actually taking longer than they should because they were in an area that wasn't getting enough sun. If you saw my last video on what you can winter sow in the shade, or two videos ago, what you can winter sow in the shade, that was how I knew my um, Swiss chard and my radishes were taking longer than they should. All right. I also included in there um, special instructions or methods used. So for example, when I planted potatoes in grow bags, I talked about what soil mix I used, what I added, like I added bone meal to it specifically because potatoes do well with, uh, is it phosphorus or whatever it is, it's a bone meal um, and, uh, and any kind of special instructions for, like for my raspberries. I kept the tags that came with the raspberries, which had instructions, but I also lose things. And so I figured if I wrote them down in my journal, then I would have an idea of what I should do in case I lost those pieces of paper somehow, because I am prone to losing things. Another thing I kept was just a general gardening activities. Like today I pruned back, blah, blah, blah. Today I weeded or tried starting a new garden or whatever. Um, and as well as tasks to do like, okay, this week I need to do these things. And it just helped me kind of keep track of my process and, oh, did I weed those things the other day? I, you know, oh yes, I did. Okay. I checked that out. Granted, nobody ever keeps up on the weeding like they should just, it's okay. <laughs> um, and I talked about, um, uh, when, when COVID-19 hit, I did a couple of journal entries about what I'm going to do differently because of COVID. Um, I, for example, I added to, uh, I added pole beans, um, the Christmas lima beans specifically, um, and, um, cabbage to my thing because I wanted to have something that I could store for the winter to eat because I didn't know what the food supply would be like because of, of COVID-19. So I made a journal of what seeds I was buying and what kind of new vegetables I was growing. Um, and, and I didn't remember doing that when I looked back through the journal, like, oh yeah, I guess I did change my plans a little um, to grow things that would be more substantive and store worthy, storage worthy. I also, one day I was just looking out, I kept a bird feeder in my backyard. Um, and one day I just journaled what birds I had seen and was seeing and got out my bird identifier book in high school. I had a great teacher, uh, Mr. Murdoch, who took us out birding and taught us how to identify birds. And I've just always, I've never been an avid birder, but I've always loved identifying birds. And so I kept a little log of the different birds I'd seen um, in the backyard, which I just was kind of fun to do. I also kept a list of what I want to do, my plant seeds my, to buy, my wish list, um, any seedlings I purchased. And because if you'll ch you remember from my other videos last year, I grew way too many seedlings using the winter sowing process, a wonderful accidental byproduct of how successful winter sowing is. And so I kept a journal of how how many seedlings I gave away and specifically like three tomato plants to Marjorie or three, you know, three Cherokee tomato plants to Marjorie. And because I was giving plants away to local people, um, I needed to write it down somewhere so that I knew how to label the little containers, you know, my solo cups with a permanent marker with their name on it for when they came to get their stuff. So it helped me also organize on giving away stuff. And then, you know, I think I also randomly put down general observations, like if I was seeing something was taking long or like pests were a problem and how I tried to handle it. And then at the end of each season, at the end of spring and at the end of the f uh, summer, I went through and I said, okay, these are the things I grew this year, this last season. And how did they do? So I talked about, um, I talked about, how they did, observations, things I will do differently next year. And that was so help, super helpful, as well as broader observations and goals for the next year. So it gives you an idea of like the kind of observations I did. Now to talk about the things I'm going to add this year um, or have already started adding. Um, so the three main themes. One is soil type. This year, I want to pay more attention to when I'm doing my winter sewing jugs. There's, but there's a one, there's the two winter sewing groups I'm a part of on Facebook. They, there's just a huge amount of discussion going on right now about what soil types work well for winter sewing. And 
I don't have a strong opinion on it because I didn't really track. I used like three different things when I winter sewed last year. I'm going to keep in my journal a log of what type of um, growing medium I used, what potting soil brand I used to help me understand if a pot failed, did it have, was one of the failing point um, the type of soil? The only way you can know is to find out for yourself, right? And while I trust the people who have said the really expensive stuff works, it is very expensive. It's $20 more expensive than even the cheapest or like decently cheap organic type. Um, and so I want to know, do I need to be spending $35, 25 to $35 for a two, you know, for a bag of, of uh, potting soil versus $9.99, right? All right. So that's one of the things I want to, I want to keep track of this year. And I've started doing that. Another one is I want to put more details about the seeds. Now I already mentioned sort of toward the beginning of this video, how, um, I just tracked the number of holes I poked in the soil and planted seeds in instead of how many total seeds when it came to jugs. Now I think when I planted them outside, I marked how many, no, I think I did holes for that one too. So I want to actually write the number of seeds down or if I did like a scatter version like where I just scattered them at least mark that down and then that way when I go back and I say okay I got six out of eight of the seeds that I sowed did I'll know the germination rate is fairly high for those I also because this year unlike last year I'm using um, seeds that are older. Some of them are ones I bought this year, but most of them are ones that are older. I also want to know what age the envelope is. Like if it says seeds for 2020 or 2019, I'm even going to try one from like 20, 2005. That's a whole nother video we're going to get to later on this spring to see if you can grow 15 year old tomato seeds, but okay. Um, and then, you know, I also want to, within that, I, last year harvested a bunch of seeds from my own plants, tomato seeds, um, flower seeds, herb seeds. And I want to know whether the, um, the, the seeds grow and if, if I self harvested versus got them from someone else who had a higher propagation rate, I want to know if my harvesting process worked. So I'm going to mark there on whether the seeds were from me <laughs> or from a third party source. Um, and I may even do like half jug me, half jug, other third party source just in case my process didn't work well. All right. So then the third theme of things I'm doing differently this year is it's the YouTube channel stuff. Last year I started, started this channel at the beginning of the spring of last year. Um, and you know, there's no real, I don't make huge notes, but like notes that I want or, or, or uh, episode ideas if they're ones I want to do later on like on winter sewing I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of videos later on in this process because I'm not going to rush the process on my end because that doesn't help anybody it doesn't help me it doesn't help you so when the time comes to show you things like when to transplant I want to have things to transplant and so I have a list of things I want to make sure to do videos on this year if I can all right so I hope this all has been helpful to you. And I hope if you aren't journaling, it inspires you to keep a journal in some form, even if it's a vlog, even if it's something like this, keep a journal, take photos, keep track of things. It really can help yourself now and in the future. And um, if there are things that I haven't journaled that you think I should be, um, or, or that you found very useful, I'd love to hear that. Or if you have questions about whether, well, I don't know how, what questions would help, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, and, you know, I, I wish you the best of luck this year. And again, if you are able to keep the journal all year, that's great. But any journaling will be useful to your future self. So just go ahead and start it. So those are the things I had, and I hope that is helpful to you. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Um, I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts. And um, if you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so as I plan to provide more of this kind of content in the future. And otherwise, I'll see you next time.